All right, our last video for sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, take a look at the triangle. We have to find, well, first of all, we only have to find the sine of angle C. So we don't have to find um, all three trig functions of our angle. Um, but if you look at our triangle, we've got a side length of 13, a 13, and a 10. What I'm noticing is that there's no right angle in this triangle. In sine, cosine, and tangent, that's only that only works for right triangles. We talked about that in the intro video. So does that mean that we can't even do this problem? Well, of course not. I wouldn't have an entire example video and say, oh, no solution, move on. Well, maybe I would, but we will be able to figure this out. Um, so because the two sides here, the 13 and the 13, are the same length, if you remember, we call this an isosceles triangle. So if you have an isosceles triangle, here's what you can do. You can, from this angle A up here, where the two congruent sides meet, you can draw an altitude. What an altitude is, if you remember from geometry A, is it goes straight down and it forms right angles. Well, now we have two right triangles. All right. Now, how, that's great to have a right triangle, but we need to know some more information about the right triangle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this one over here on the right side because that's where angle C is, and all we need is the sine of angle C for this problem. Um, see how the bottom is a 10? Well, with an isosceles triangle, if you drop an altitude down, what it does is it hits the midpoint of that base. And a midpoint tells you that these two sides will be congruent. And if the whole thing was 10, that means this one is 5 and this one is 5. So I'm going to go ahead and just redraw. This is basically what we're looking at. Here's angle C. Here's our right triangle. We know that this is 13. This is 5. In order to find the sine of angle C, um, now remember sine is... So, so I need the opposite and the hypotenuse. So the opposite is across from angle C right here, and the hypotenuse is that longest side across from the 90, which is 13. So we're very close to being able to answer this question. The only thing we need to figure out is what is the opposite side? Do we have any way to get this side length? Well, last chapter, we did a lot with right triangles, and anytime you needed to find a missing side length, and you knew two other ones, you could use that really fun theorem called the Pythagorean theorem. So we're just going to fall back on a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, the c has to be the hypotenuse, so that's where the 13 goes. Um, so a squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. 5 squared is 25. Oops, that's a plus. 13 squared is 169. And then we subtract 25 from both sides. a squared equals 144. Square root both sides, and you get a is equal to 12. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the triangle and label the opposite side as 12. And now we can answer the question. The sine of angle C is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side we just figured out was 12, and the hypotenuse is 13. So our final answer is 12 over 13.